What is going on guys, it is WrestleMania here, back with some more news. Join us now as we look at the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know, including John Cena now finished with WWE, a WWE star officially done with wrestling, big changes coming to the WWE, Corey Graves and Carmella welcome their first child, and much more. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new website, WrestleMania.com. Now let's look at Dynamite, as we won't recap the show, but just look at the good, the bad, and the downright ugly. And as always, we look at the good first, as number one, Devil Mystery deepens. Who is the man in the mask? That's a question that has intrigued wrestling fans for as long as the first wrestler decided to don a disguise, and when done right, as opposed to the infamous higher power reveal of 99, it can make for exciting TV. So far, AEW has done an excellent job with the mysterious devil, having the masked man and his henchmen helping MJF at times and hurting him at other times. Fans have their theories about the devil's identity, which only adds to the excitement. Is this a clever con by MJF or an outsider trying to outplay the master of mind games? Number 2. MJF's luck is running out Speaking of MJF, it appears the current AEW world champion's luck is running out as he has no allies to turn to and a growing list of enemies. It's normal for world champions to have a constant lineup of challenges, but in MJF's case, they're coming out of the woodwork. Jay White, Wardlow, and Samoa Joe. This is a clever move by AEW as it puts pressure on MJF and creates sympathy for a character that apparently is being booked as a fan favorite, albeit in the role of a, I'm a scumbag, but I'm your scumbag. Number 3. Adam Page Goes Berserk If Swerve Strickland wanted to push Adam Page's buttons, he succeeded beyond all expectations. Page's pre-match and post-match attack on Swerve will hopefully remind Swerve that while Adam Page is babyface, he's no delicatessen. Having Handman hit their dead eye on Strickland off the entrance ramp sent fans the message that they dare not miss the two wrestlers' next match. Good build up for full gear. The Dynamite covered all the bases when it comes to hyping an upcoming pay per view, announcing matches as well as building excitement for them through beatdowns, interviews, and matches. Full gear is shaping up to be one of AEW's best pay per views of the year, at least judging from the way it was hyped on Dynamite. Number 6 Timeless Tony Storm Keeps Getting Better. A Tony Storm's metamorphosis into Timeless Tony Storm continues to get better as Storm is showing that this is no one note gimmick. She seems to love the character and finds a new way to flesh it out every week such as her mispronouncing Tony Shivani and Hikuru Shida's names as well as adding Luther to her act. Storm is a perfect example of how a gimmick change can revolutionize a wrestler. But that was good, what about the bad is number one, AEW needs to stop with meaningless matches. Last night's Dynamite was a good show, but once again, AEW wasted the fans' time with meaningless matches, this time with Sting and Darby Allen battling the Outrunners. While a squash match here and there has its purpose, what makes AEW think fans have any interest in seeing curtain jerkers on its flagship show? And number two, Samoa Joe vacates the title. And last night's post-match segment with Samoa Joe was deeply flawed. Joe just showed how tough he is after defeating big man Keith Lee, then reminded the AEW Galaxy that he's determined to dethrone MJF. However, having Joe vacate the Ring of Honor Television Championship was a step back for the title, devaluing it in the eyes of fans who have enjoyed Joe's run. AEW has shown wrestlers holding multiple titles before and Joe might as well have thrown the TV title in the trash can last night. That was nothing ugly, as Dynamite excelled at hyping Full Gear as well as next week's big street fight between the Don Callis family and Kenny Omega and company. Fans have seen bigger shows, but this was big enough and interesting enough to hold fans' interest. What did you guys think of Dynamite last night? Let us know in the comments down below. Now let's move on to the news. Now first story looks at big changes coming to WWE. Atop of today's news are several stories concerning some significant changes to WWE, not only where fans will see its weekly TV, but changes to WrestleMania and other PLEs. The first WWE PLEs moving to Friday night. The TKO Holdings recently held its quarterly earnings report phone call and there were several takeaways, including the possibility of PLEs moving to Fridays as TKO creates super weekends featuring both WWE and UFC shows in one city. Meltzer analyzed, the concept they said that they're looking at was WWE on Friday, UFC on Saturday, and WWE on Monday for the package. Now does that mean that the WWE pay-per-view will be on Friday and UFC is on Saturday? Well he speculated further saying, because if that's what it means, that means that Smackdown will not be on Friday because they're doing pay-per-views on Fridays. So I mean that's something that they said. I don't think that they meant, I mean, if they're going to get big site fees, they're not going to want TV tapings, they're going to want pay-per-views out of that. That was interesting, one thing I noted from the conference call. Uh, by now it's clear that WWE is willing to have its weekly TV on whichever nights their WWE partners feels works best for them. 
This includes Raw, which has been on Monday nights for its entire history. The only question is how USA Network would feel if it planned on keeping SmackDown on Fridays and the WWE decided to run its PLEs that same night. Next up, could the WWE change NXT's WrestleMania PLE date? Another possible change is when WWE holds its NXT PLE during WrestleMania weekend. The current setup has NXT stand and deliver PLE taking place the same day as night one of WrestleMania. However, WrestleVotes recently tweeted, On the heels of the CW announcement, I'm told discussions have taken place regarding NXT Stand and Deliver PLE schedule for WrestleMania weekend. Those discussions have been about the placement of the show. Sources state there's support for the show to be open the weekend and be held on Thursday night at Wells Fargo Center. I was also told, while it makes sense to some, it's not ideal for others. We'll see how it turns out. He then later tweeted, And just like that, a few hours later, no coincidence, WWE announces NXT will remain on Saturday. Sources who stated the company was open to having the event on Thursday made it clear earlier some were not in favour, thus no change. But are there any other changes coming to NXT? Well, Meltzer is reporting that the black and gold brand may be moving from the Capitol Center to hold its weekly shows from various venues much as Raw and SmackDown do now. Meltzer discussed the pros and cons about NXT touring on an episode of Wrestling Observer Radio saying, The pluses are, I think that if it looks good and looks better, we've seen with Raw, we've seen with everyone when it looks good on TV, the look of TV show is very very important when it comes to viewership, so moving to bigger places will help to a degree. It's unknown if CW asked the WWE to consider moving to a bigger venue to make the show look more impressive to viewers, and Meltzer discussed how touring could adversely affect NXT superstars. But the developmental aspect of things, if you're taking the people and you're taking them out of town, the travel days and everything like that, it does give them less days in the gym and it does a lot of people who work with the talent away for a couple of days. So there is negativity towards unless they do arenas in Florida. Meltzer mused that WWE could stick to venues in Florida but noted the risk of fans tiring of seeing NXT if it only tours Florida. Do you think NXT should tour? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up, John Cena finished with WWE. A John Cena is exiting the WWE, but as he worked his last match. While the WWE legend has teased retirement by posting pictures on social media of sports stars' last games and final appearances, not to mention just posting a The End credits from a Looney Tunes cartoon, but nonetheless the Screen Actors Guild strike is officially over, which means it's back to Tinseltown for Cena. There's always a chance of Cena returning when his Hollywood schedule permits it, but that's likely going to be a long time down the road as studios scramble to resume filming movies that have sat idle for months. Cena's recent run in WWE was a lot of fun for fans, and as we pointed out, his crown jewel match against Sola Sokoa was a perfect send-off for him and a great boost for Sola Sokoa. Next up, Ricochet and Concussion Protocol. Now it's time for an update on Raw superstar Ricochet who suffered an injury during his fatal four-way match. While it's unknown whether Ricochet has a concussion, the WWE has placed him in Concussion Protocol. Meltzer and Alvarez noted this on the recent Wrestling Observer Radio. Next up, Maria May is All Elite. Anne-Maria made to AEW's female roster as a talented 25-year-old debuted on Dynamite. The UK native has competed around the world and just finished a run in stardom where she held the Goddess of Stardom Championship. Based on her interview with Dynamite, it appears she's a big fan of Tony Storm, but it's too early to tell whether she'll be an ally or a stalker of Timeless Tony. Next up, a WWE star officially done with wrestling. Now, is there any chance that former superstar Tyson Kidd having a medical miracle like Edge and Daniel Bryan had, allowing him to return to the ring after an apparent career-ending injury? Well, fans have been asking this ever since Tyson's career was prematurely ended in 2015. Kidd spoke with Chris Van Vliet recently and discussed the likelihood of an in-ring comeback. I know they say never say never, but I've been saying never for the last 8 years. No, the truth is I can probably do in some things 99% of the moves, I just can't do the actual bump. I'm sure I could maybe take a couple of bumps, but at what cost? I don't know, I haven't taken one. I'm very fortunate, I enjoy my work as a producer. If I didn't, and if I didn't have that outlet, then I could understand why I'd maybe try taking a bump and see how that felt and kind of go from there. And finally, happy news for Corey Graves and Carmella. And last but not least, congrats to Corey Graves and Carmella on the birth of their child, Dimitri. We wish them all the best as they begin their new chapter in their lives. But there you have it folks, I'll look at Dynamite as well as the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know. Be sure to leave your comments down below and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.